<laughs> at their last meeting, the management team at River Glen decided to use telehealth to support the medical care of their residents. Since that meeting, they have taken some initial steps. Emma has learned more about government incentives. She has also looked into telehealth technology requirements and costs. Bruce has begun to modify River Glen's business plan to incorporate telehealth. And Helen has considered how telehealth could be of most benefit to their residents. Today, they are planning the technology they will need. Before choosing a service provider, they will discuss the confidentiality, security and operating standards required for telehealth. Well, look, let's make a start by thinking about the sort of consultations that we can make using telehealth. Well, there's the residents' consultations with their medical specialists and with allied health practitioners. These clinicians would have to make the decisions about whether these consultations were appropriate for video conferencing. But given that we have a number of residents who have prostate problems, it's likely we would be setting up telehealth consultations with urology specialists. Other clinicians might be psychogeriatricians, palliative care specialists and um, dementia management mm. consultants. Don't forget Sophie in Midtown. Yes, Sophie is um, the wound care consultant down at Midtown Community Health. She'll be using the video conferencing system to check the treatment of residents' ulcers and other wounds. Then there are initial assessments for specialists. Mm. There might be cases where you can use telehealth to prepare for a face-to-face -face meeting. You know, filling out paperwork, mm. answering questions mm. and arranging tests before the resident has to travel to the specialist. Okay. Well, what sort of equipment do you think we need? Mm. We're going to need some expert advice on this. At a minimum, video conference hardware, software and an examination camera with a good zoom. And if the equipment's easily transportable, we can actually take it into the client's room. Mm. OK. What about the internet connection? Are we going to have to upgrade our internet service? We have reasonably fast broadband now. We should check our likely data usage. Then we can check it against the data quota we have with our internet service provider. Mm -hmm. And if we're actually moving the equipment into the residents' rooms, maybe we could hook into the mobile network. Mm. But we can't get a reliable signal in cottages three and four. I think we'd need to use Wi-Fi. When planning a facility's technology requirements for telehealth, decide on the activities that will take place in telehealth consultations. Then, plan to have the appropriate system in place. The type of internet connection at your facility will influence what is possible in a telehealth consultation. As a rule, it's better to choose the fastest affordable connection that is available. Yes. Well, before we make any decision over where we're going to use the equipment, we also need to look at issues like privacy and security standards. Well, with confidentiality requirements, they're pretty much the same as with a face-to-face -face consultation. Obviously, the main requirement would be that the consultation cannot be overheard. I've checked Medicare standards about confidentiality and telehealth consultations. Mm -hmm. I think our current policies are reasonably adequate, but they might need some changes. We'll need to review the consent form. It needs to cover having a nurse present when the resident meets the specialist. But what about preserving the confidentiality of patient information that we store and send over the internet? Medicare standards seem much the same as the ones we follow for collecting and storing residents' personal information. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, our next step then is to get some sort of idea of, of um, service providers. I found three companies in the state. You'll see they offer quite different services. With our local knowledge and expertise, is it possible for us to set up our own service? It is possible, but we need at least advice on the equipment and software we're going to need. Mm. I actually like this one. It uh, offers to do everything for you.
Yes, they, they do claim that. Uh, Broadacre Park uses Meditel. Um, Meditel provides the hardware, the software and a list of specialists that you can choose from. I've talked to Kath Ryan at Broadacre. She says they've been limited by the way the system is set up. Mm -hmm. A GP can ask for a referral to a particular specialist, but sometimes the specialist won't take a patient until they know what they're taking on. Meditel are quite new. I don't think they're right for us. They say they're expanding their list of specialists and allied health practitioners, but currently they don't have the depth of people. What happens if we want to use a different clinician? In Australia, telehealth service providers offer a range of service options. At their most comprehensive, services can supply the telehealth system, make appointments and provide the medical specialists. A residential aged care facility's choice of a service provider is influenced by four factors. The resident's existing relationship with clinicians, the level of technical and related expertise, the availability and quality of telehealth service providers and the resources available. You've been watching an example of how managers at a rural residential aged care facility could begin planning telehealth. To a certain extent, the depth of technical knowledge they need will depend on their choice of service provider. However, even if a team like Bruce, Helen and Emma choose an all-inclusive service provider, they will still need to have some understanding of telehealth technology. They will then know what to expect from their service provider.